it's been a great experience to, to serve in the Congress and I know you've been involved in a lot of uh, women's issues and I know that the Lily Ledbetter legislation you were involved with that and um, we're you know here we are debating how we can try to get more women into the workforce and get them the equal pay that they deserve and I'm just kind of wondering if you could help share any uh, information there about um, where we need to go, I mean, what we need to continue to do to build upon pieces of legislation like that that help to provide uh, parity for women in the workplace. I think it's really important that, that we continue to uh, emphasize the fact that, that, that women still make only 78, 78 cents for every dollar that a man makes in a comparable or, or the similar job. Uh, and to recognize that even if uh, equal pay is a law of the land, that is not the case. And enforcement is really important. Education is really important. And clearly, what, when the U.S. Supreme Court uh, came, do came down with their Lily Ledbetter decision, I remember I was in Hawaii, and I thought, my gosh, wh what can they be thinking? Because how can you issue a decision that says that even if you've been the, the uh, victim, of a, a pay discrimination based on your gender that you only have 180 days from the time that your employer starts to discriminate against you, which, by the way, they never tell you, that, that that's okay. And I thought, what are we going to do? And what was great was watching CNN and seeing the chairman of the committee, George Miller, saying, we're going to change this. It is really nice to be on a committee that can undo Supreme Court decisions, <laughs> provided that your perspective is what it should be. But that kind of... Um, response, the kind of advocacy and, and enforcement of labor laws, you are key to that. And I cannot tell you how many people in my community, in my state, are so happy that you are our labor secretary. When, when I came to your swearing in and you said there's a new sheriff in town, I often <laughs> tell that story to the people back home that maybe they're going to have a, a shot at, at, at uh, you know, being treated fairly because you're here. Thank you. Um, one of the things I, I thought might be helpful too is to kind of share the importance of um, diversity. I know uh, as a member of, of the House how important it is in, in committees uh, that are held talking strategically about different pieces of legislation, how, how uh, one voice can make a difference. Is there maybe one uh, area that, where that has happened where you really <coughs> saw something change because you were there, because you may have been the only uh, woman in the room or the only um, person representing your, your background that had a chance to change something? I know both of us have had those kind of experiences, and I'm, sh I'm sure uh, the people in the audience. Uh, one specific issue that I think uh, made a huge difference that, uh, uh, frankly, Democrats were in the majority is the Filipino World War II veterans' uh, bills. And the Filipino World War II veterans have been promised that they would get the kinds of benefits that uh, other uh, veterans um, would get, and it took them till last year to, to even get some measure of justice. And this was a bill that KPEC, uh, the Congressional Asia Pacific American Caucus, put at the top of the agenda. And we really pushed it, pushed it. Of course, a lot of people came, you know, came in support of that. But it took a long time. And I don't think that bill would have passed even uh, well, it passed last year. It would not have passed without that kind of uh, concerted Push. There were a lot of people who voted against it, as a matter of fact. There were a lot of uh, members I know who, who didn't want to see uh, benefits also paid out uh, for the service that the Filipino World War mm -hmm. II veterans provided to our country. And mm -hmm. it's, it's something that also resonates in our own Latino culture where we've also had um, people uh, at, in that uh, history uh, in our time where people were actually sent back home, deported because of economic hardships or, or I, what I want to say is just a lack of understanding of what, um, I don't even want to say immigrants, some were U.S. citizens that were actually deported back to Mexico in the, in the 1940s. And that's something that I was starting to work, work on in the House, but we didn't get too far. But it's, it's sad um, that those things happen in our, in our history. We're reminded by them, and then 
we pick up and we move on and we, we remember that, but we also um, continue to confront more uh, areas where I think we build bigger coalitions. And I know that the Hispanic Caucus, which I was an active member of, we worked very closely on issues regarding health care disparities. Mm -hmm. And uh, Madeline uh, Bordalo, who represents Guam, uh, would work very closely with us. And we actually had a, a forum in Houston where it was uh, just all dedicated to the Asian Pacific community. And, and it was quite insightful to, to hear from the different uh, groups in the Asian Pacific community to talk about some of the barriers that they faced. Um, the Samoan community, the Vietnamese, you talked about that, and how um, challenges that many of them face in, in integrating themselves into our communities. I, and I know that um, that that continues to be an issue, I know at least in my own state in California where we've had um, issues, uh, misunderstanding, we, we see um, those things that, that still occur. And I just wonder if there's things that we can do, uh, maybe through our own department, to be able to help uh, provide assistance to people that um, may not understand that there are tools available mm -hmm. for them, training, education, mm -hmm. and things that we're working on here. That's right. Well, we have laws that prohibit discrimination on the basis of uh, race, sex, uh, uh, country of origin, religion, all of that. And, and those laws need to be enforced. They, people need to know what their rights are, and then the laws need to be enforced enforced and your department and the Department of Justice has a huge role to play in all of that. I think that that inequality in our country it persists and this is why there's always work for decision makers and, and leaders because I, in my view and I, this is my 27th year in elected office, nothing stays done, eternal vigilance is key and I think the, the issues of inequality in our country need to be addressed, faced, uh, and, and the appropriate actions taken. But, uh, you know, the Japanese Americans were interned illegally during World War II. There are issues relating to the Arab Muslim community now. And, and uh, so, the, uh, as I said, eternal vigilance, providing equal opportunity, that is one of the keys of why I do what I do. Um, and, and if you're a member of any minority, I think that's got to be something that is a, a particular uh, uh, incentive to us because we understand, we experience, uh, we, we know what it's like to be treated differently because of how we look or where we come from. And I think it's incumbent upon us when we're in a position of decision making to bring that kind of perspective to the table. And that's why I also support diversity. If you're not at the table being part of the decision making process, then all of these minority issues don't get addressed or they certainly don't get addressed appropriately. Right. Well, I think we're con concluding now our discussion. And um, I just want to thank uh, Congresswoman uh, Macy Hirono, who's uh, one of my heroes. And, somebody who I know is going to be helping our department out um, through your committee work on, on labor and education. And we look forward to working with you and seeing more uh, Asian uh, Pacific Islander women and men uh, becoming more active in our government and serving in our leadership positions. And hopefully uh, they will have had uh, been touched by you today um, and will be inspired to do, to do more to improve our society. So, Please give her a wonderful Thank round you. of applause. Thank you. Thank you.